talking, you said we are far too vain mm -hmm. and what? Emotional. Emotional and vain. Now, what human being do you know that is emotional and vain? Maybe every person that's breathing on yeah. the earth today? Probably. Okay, go ahead. Emotions that lead to insight is far different from giddy thoughtness, thoughtlessness, emotion, and that lead to destruction. And now we're still talking about the same thing. We're talking about the emotions that run rampant in our bodies, that split us in two, that create the dual nature, and instills that restless, boring spirit that we cannot be satisfied, that we think that if we go with somebody else, and we leave our present situation, that we will find happiness and contentment. It's not true. That hellacious anxiety is occurring within. Go ahead. It is necessary to understand that emotion um, uncontrolled leads to a dangerous ground upon which castles of deceit are built. Okay, deception. Castles of deceit. Castles of deceit are built. Castles of deceit. Now listen to this, Bridget. Castles of deceit are built when unrestrained emotions are allowed to run rampant. Unrestrained emotions. Now I'm the first one to tell you that I love emotions. You know, I'm a Cancer, 29 degrees, but I got 17,000 planets in Leo. But anyway, this unrestrained emotions lead to castles of deceit. And it goes back to limit me and concentrate me. Limit me and concentrate me. Because you cannot exist with unrestrained emotions. You will be exhausted. You will just use up yourself. Okay. Um, the need to be adored, the need to be praised, the need to be idolized, the need to be cared for is unnecessary when one is opening for its divine self. Wow. So you don't need adoration. And what else? Um, Cared praised, for and praised yeah. and all that? That is unless you have a Leo moon, like me and you, huh? Then you need every one of those times about three times, right? Right. So that, those words must not be true. <laughs> Go ahead, sweet. There is no need for these things, and thou must be convicted thoroughly and of falsely of such non-existent emotions. All right, I heard you. Go ahead. Thou can only feel that truly loved if thou longest loves thyself. You got to love yourself. Is that what you're saying? Mm -hmm. You got to love yourself. So that um, dragon having that fight in the um, meadow and the blood is a black and yellow, the way comes to an end. Loving yourself is the way. In order to be able to love someone else, you must love yourself. And not, what did I just say? In order to love somebody else? Or did I say in order yeah, to love yourself? In order to love somebody else. Okay, in order to love somebody else, honey, you have to love yourself. And you hear that. That's a cliche. You yeah. know, what does it mean to love yourself? Maybe you're going to tell me in the next sentence. Um, there is no other person outside of thyself that loves and appreciates thee in a way such as thou craves. <gasps> what? Nobody else can love you the way that you love yourself. Nobody else can crave you the way you crave yourself. Wow, we put a lot of responsibility and burden on the other person to try to fulfill something. I usually can't say that word. I usually get it all. I did pretty good that time, didn't I? Mm -hmm. Fulfill. We put a lot of burden and responsibility and obligation on another person to crave us, to adore us, to appreciate us, when you're clearly telling me that no one can do that but ourselves. No one can come close to that. The battle, the dragon's fight is in the meadow. The dragon's fight is in the meadow, inside. Inside, honey. It's not out here. Our anxieties. We can't find them out here. Go ahead. Only thee feels the void, and only thee can fill the void. Limit me and concentrate me. Limit me, because you said we fill the void. Huh? 
Right. You said feel it, and that's F I E L. No, F E E L S. Oh, we feel, but and then we feel it. Mm -hmm. F I L L. Okay, so we feel, and we feel. Feel. Mm -hmm. And then if you put both those words together, we full feel, mm -hmm. or feel full, or that word, full of feel. All right. It is, important, it is important to realize and understand that under no circumstance are thou completely satisfied outside the realms of thy own mind. We cannot be satisfied outside of the realms of our own mind. Well, why in the world do we tell people, do you love me? Do you love me? What are we doing that for? I don't know. How in the world can anybody love us when it's existing in our mind? We're not in love with the body. We're having a relationship with our minds. All right. Limit me and concentrate me. Um, by learning to adjust, to adapt thyself as it would be to existing circumstances, one can begin to appreciate the validity of truth and the power as it's manifested into learning and can be content with whatever state it finds itself in. Wow. Now, show me where we said that. To be where your feet are and um, to... I think we just said that. We never really wrote it down. Okay, we didn't write that down, but you do remember us saying to get rid of the ambiguity, we had to be where we were instead of thinking we could go somewhere else, find somebody else, change our partners, change our house, change our jobs. Yeah, mm -hmm. was it on there? Yeah. Okay, read that again, honey. In the feet station? Yes. When illnesses arrive, be cautious and content to rest and relax our feet. There you go. Be where your feet are. Next sentence, and then we're going to change the book, because it seems like we're hung up on this book, but I like this page, don't you? Mm -hmm. um, do not attach unjust importance to these individuals who vast hast but surrounded thyself. All right, now, we might get up and have to change seats on that one because that is a powerful statement. Read that one again, sweetie. Do not attach unjust importance to those individuals who thou hast surrounded thyself with. Do not attach special significance to the people you have surrounded yourself with. Again, leaving thy first love, which is thyself. You read, said, we can't crave or love or adorn or appreciate or anything. I, Anybody on the outside can't do that. They can't fill that void. We have to fill it. We feel it and we fill it. So we cannot attach importance to those people we surround ourselves with, and mm. especially those people who are derogatory or who um, cast negative light. You know, would say, well, you, you know, I don't, I don't like your dress. Y your words are insignificant to me, is what you're saying. You know? because what I feel inside of here, you can't get in here. Right. And what you think of me doesn't have a thing to do with what I think, unless I let you inside my mind. And there's not very much room in there for you and me to be in there together. Okay, which way you wanna go now, honey? Um, you can pick a sentence. Ah, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna read it. I guess. All right, let's see. All right, let's go. All right, here we go. A high, let me see, it feels, it feels truth as something ever present in an ideal sense, but something which becomes relative when objectified. It feels truth, truth, that's what we're talking about today, as something ever present, all right? Human beings feeling truth, ever present where you're sitting in an ideal sense, but something which becomes relative when objectified. So, woo! Now I gotta get my paper, because this is about memory. Reference to memory. You tell me right now, how do you feel? Tired. Okay, you feel tired. So any thought that you would have would be filtered through tiredness, right? Yeah. On another day, when you're not tired, and you would have, or I would ask, a feeling or a thought, it would be filtered through whatever that present state was. Okay, reference to memory. If you are trying to remember something, let's pull up something, honey. Let's pull up something 
that's so inconsequential that um, took place. Okay, let's go back to last year. Last year when you had your foot operated on, all mm -hmm. right, and you were out of um, commission for three months, you yeah. wore a cast. All right, let's talk about that experience and r tell me, remember one thing about it. Um, I had a purple cast. Okay, you had a purple cast. What was your, um, that sensation for those 12 weeks, if you could sum them up with the purple cast, how did you feel? Uh, it hurt so bad. Okay, you hurt Pain. so bad. So you can bring that back to memory. Mm -hmm. Now, is that an objective feeling or is that a subjective feeling? Objective. All right, that's exactly what this is talking about. A, it feels truth as something ever present in an ideal sense, but something which becomes relative when objectified. You experienced that hurt. Mm -hmm. I didn't. I could say I was with you and I went through the operation everything with you, but I cannot experience that. Yeah. Only you can. In your mind, you went through it with the body. A highly gifted scientist as well as a poet might have this segment emphasized since there is no difference between the two. There's no difference between a poet and a scientist? No difference? Tell me why. I don't know, I mean they... <laughs> how come? How, does a, what, how would a poet describe, like you were the poet first, you said I had a, a purple cast. Yeah. Okay, that was artistic, that was beautiful. You were making an, a poet, poetical statement but then the scientist came in and uh, said... He'd well, probably like break it down to like the root of the surgery that I had, I guess. There you go. The root of the surgery. And I think if I could call that back today, we are, as human beings, are seeking authentic action and response. So both of those existed together. The beautiful, beautiful, it was a beautiful purple cast, and the pain. Mm -hmm. The pain. How in the world do you blend the two together in life? Something so beautiful and so painful. And yet, you went through the surgery to correct something that was, you know, caused you pain to start with. Now, it's fixed. And you have, or you're thinking about having the other foot done too, that would be this summer. All right, what's next, sweetie? Oh, get those cards over there. Do you wanna talk about the cars? The car, oh yes! Thank you for bringing that up. All right. Normally, I don't care about cars, or, and I certainly don't know um, hardly what one car is from another car. But this week, and I was going to run it off the internet and blow it up, I saw the prettiest car this week I think I have ever seen in my entire life. And it, it, I'm not sure whether it was a 2007 or 2008 Bentley. It was a sports Bentley. It was absolutely magnificent. And used, it cost $118,000. I can't imagine what it costs new. But that car exemplified me. I think that that car represented everything in this world that I could feel about a car. So I think I will. Next week, I'm going to just um, print it off and, and blow it up and put it right up there with our sign. Now, what is the car that you like? Um, Range Rovers. Range Rovers, what do they look like? Like an SUV. Like an SUV, okay. I mean, um, short, I mean, give me one. Does it look like a Jeep one or does it look yeah, like? Yeah, it's kind of like a Jeep, except the back is like angled. Oh, and does that express you? And what color would that be? Um, probably black. I was gonna say black too, black for both of us. Mm -hmm. So I'm a Bentley and you're a Road Ranger? Range Rover. Oh, Road. Range Rover. A Range Rover. Yeah. You're a Range Rover, and I'm a Bentley. Okay. A Bentley, and you're a Range Rover. Okay. There you go. Now, which but one? But not the Land Rover, because the Land Rovers are ugly. They are? Yeah, they're like the cousins, but the uh, Range Rover. Well, is there yeah. any kind of family to a Bentley? Because I think he, I'm going to tell you, Bridget, that was the prettiest thing I ever saw. I mean, it was just designed. Whoever designed that car, I mean, he was having a pleasurable experience when he did it. Okay, what are we gonna do now? Um, 
Good. Doesn't matter. You tell me. You tell me, sweetie. Let's pick another. Come pick another one. Bentley, Bentley, Bentley. I've never seen a Bentley riding down the road, have you? No. Do they drive them down the road? I mean, oh, you have to like. Oh, Jacob's saying he's seen one. You've seen a Bentley? Driving Maybe down on the road. TV. You seen it? No, he says he's seen it on the road. Really? Brandy, you ever seen a Bentley? Heck no. Okay. Um, what are you so worried about? Let it rip. It was only a wet paper bag, but you can't see it until it's um, disintegrates right before your eyes. Wow. Okay. This. Where's our first paper? What was the first paper? Oh, um, concentrate me and limit me. Yeah. Limit me and. What are you so worried about? Let it rip. It's only a wet paper bag, but you can't see it until it disintegrates right before your eyes. <laughs> All right. It goes back to limit me and concentrate me. I will let my wild imagination and feelings and emotions and all kinds of anxieties and frustrations and worries carry me to the ends of the earth carry me to um, Madagascar and back with worrying over something when it really, the things that we worry about never take place, never. But we carry ourselves and just create all kinds of havoc in our health, health states and in our emotional states, our mental states, and sometimes even financial as well because we get so worried about a certain thing and it says, what are you worried about it for? What are you worried? What are you so worried about? Let it rip. It's only a wet paper bag, but you can't see it until it disintegrates right before your eyes. And that goes back to that, the, that uh, dragon. The way comes to an end. Mm -hmm. All right. Next, let's do, pull that, let's do some cosmic therapy cards over there. Limit me and concentrate me. Limit me and concentrate me. So for all of those who are trying to make a decision today, just be still. Be still. The way will resolve itself. Stop worrying yourself crazy. Did I just pick one? Anyone you want to, darling. What you got? Abyss. Abyss? Yeah. Did you really pull the abyss?